Hi creative friends, Melissa Ullman here with the Creative Chatterbox, also content contributor for Creative Memories and design team member of Creative Life Scrapbooking. I'm going to be sharing today this layout with you here and it's called Burst of Love and basically it's a burst and it can be used with any collection. On this collection right here, I am using it with Tropic Time as well as Island Waters cardstock. And on this one, I'm using the new Birthday Bonanza collection with the Dark Sea Green cardstock. To create this layout, you're going to need one base piece of paper and you're gonna like both sides because that's the piece then that we're gonna pull through for our burst and you'll understand here in a minute. And you're also going to want a second piece that you like both sides of because the small strips we're cutting off from the edge, we're gonna use the back side as these dividing pieces here. So you're gonna find out that we are going to use up every inch of the paper that we are cutting. So, and also it is um, also helpful, like if you find a collection that possibly has some gems with it to place on the outside ends of those bursts. So I would be very appreciative if you like what you see to give me a thumbs up, to subscribe and to comment uh, on what you liked the best with this. If you are somebody who likes to have a printout and step-by-step -step instructions, I do have those available on my website, www.thecreativechatterbox.com. All right, so let's go ahead and get started because so many of us have children back to, going back to school right now. I thought it would be great if we use our back to school collection to create this layout. So you are going to want um, stickers and any embellishments that you might have. You're going to want two pieces of paper that you like the both you like both sides of your jumbo custom cutting circle, and you're going to want red and blue blades as long as a scissors, a ruler, and a pencil. All right, oh, don't forget your mat, and your mat, most importantly for our custom cutting system. All right, so our base layout that we're going to be using, we're going to use this piece right here that is covered with stars. And on the back side of it, we have this stripe. So these are going to be part of the swirl or the burst. So we want to make sure that our circle is going to cross them in a way that will look decent. So let's not go this way. Let's go, so we're going to turn this piece of paper like so. We are going to want to stay within a half of an inch from the outside edge. And then we're going to take our jumbo circle. And you'll notice here what I've done. Let me pull off the piece of paper so I can show you. I have made small little markings using my permanent marker so on the six inch mark so if I place if I center it on here I've got six and six and then six and six so that way your arch can be this way can be this way but it's going to show us where those six inch marks are on the top and bottom I'll place this back on the mat and we'll place this here and what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to use the inside and I'm going to cut on the inside track. So you see here, I have got my, or my markings right here. So I'm going to go completely across that. I'm gonna start first and foremost with the blue. So I'm gonna puncture, I'm gonna place this in the track and I'm gonna puncture or press down at that marking. So I'm gonna go across to this marking here. If you go a little bit beyond, that's okay. And then without moving it, I am coming back and I am going to do the same thing with the red. 
All right, I'm gonna lift this now. I just wanna show you so you can see. So I have it arched across that design like so. I'm going to go again, just on the inside of this one. And you're gonna wanna go as tight as you possibly can in here, right? I need to move those markings. I don't wanna cross any of the previous cuts. So staying, make sure you're looking here that you, that's it's not on top of that previous cut. We're gonna go again with the blue blade first. And then we'll come in there and do the red. Okay. So now we have two pieces that we have cut. We're gonna need a total of five arches. So let's go ahead and just continue on. But again, we don't want to cross over and we want to stay within a half of an inch. So we don't want to go beyond the half of an inch mark. All right, so now we'll do it again. So blue first from marking to marking. And again, making sure you don't go on top of any of the previous cuts. And so now I have three pieces here. So now I am going to rotate this and I'm gonna come around and I'm going to start from the top of the other side. So, Placing this, so these arches, we're gonna go from here around to here, and it doesn't cross over any of these previous. So blue first, and then red. Okay, so we have just a small space in there that we're going to now go around with. And actually what we are able to do instead of doing the full arch this time is just coming in here and doing a quarter of the arch. So just from the quarter mark, the side and the top mark there, and you will understand once we get to the next step. So blue. And then red. And then we can do fit one more on there. So you see how we have all those cuts. So now we can rotate it and do one more fourth of a cut. There we go here on the top. So from here to here, we've got this area here that has not been cut. So again, we'll go blue first, and then the red. All right, so we're done now with that. So we have all of these strips that are cut. So what we're gonna do is we're going to want to take our scissors and just snip those arches out of there. Okay, so we'll just set those aside as we cut them out. So this is a quarter one here. So we'll just set it aside. So now we are going to be using the base of this, even though we have kind of these pieces all over and we can cut some of those out in a second. So just those outside rings. All right, I 
think we got them all. All right, so a couple of these are just kind of nonsense. We don't need them. We just need the base of this. So we're actually going to turn this over and we're going to be using the gold as the base. So we can now take the next piece of paper that we're going to use and you can decide which of those you want. It's going to go on top of the gold there. So let's go ahead and use the blue side up. And then we're going to cut our, take our trimmer over here and we are going to trim off each of the sides a quarter of an inch. So a fourth of an inch from one side and a fourth of an inch. So your base piece is going to be 11 and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. Uh, the blue piece here. So we're gonna just turn that over. Make sure you hang on to these. We're going to be using them. So now I am going to just take and place some repositionable along the outside edges. And then we will center and place on that gold base. just like that. Um, our word bubbles on our paper were upside down, so let's turn that around. All right, so now I'm gonna use the mat again. So you've got these pieces back here and you can cut these off. Now, um, from the inside, we're not gonna need that and you, there's no reason for you to adhere all of that. So this is not going to be used. You can use this for punching some standalone punches, um, some scrap pieces, etc. All right, so from the front side, we are going to center this on our mat. And we're going to be taking our ruler and making a few lines. We're gonna start first and foremost excuse me, um, and place a ruler across here at eight and four, so four and eight. And then at the four inch mark, we're just gonna draw a small line. Um, it's gonna be a plus sign actually. It's probably hard to see, but right, just about an inch long. And then we're going to go from the top at eight inches to the bottom at four inches and also creating a one inch line. So as you see, it's a crisscross there, okay? That is just telling us where the center of the burst is going to be. Then we're going to take our ruler and we're going to go across the four and eight inch marking on each side again with our ruler. And we're gonna draw a pencil line across on the top piece. You don't need it on the bottom base. So again, it might be kind of tough, tough to see, but we have a pencil line there at the four inch line. We're gonna do the same thing here at four and eight. So four inches on the top, eight on the bottom, and then just draw a line there on the top piece. So all the way along. back here and so that way you might be able to see it a little bit brighter all right so now what we're going to do let me hold that up see if you can see those marks there now what we're going to do is we're going to take these two quarter inch strips and we're going to just place them on top of each other one of them is going to be a quarter of an inch longer than the other. Um, so we'll just line those up and cut the quarter of an inch off from the longest one. Then you're gonna take these two strips, we're gonna put 
repositionable on them. And we're gonna place these just along the bottom edge of that pencil line. You wanna cover up the pencil line though so that um, you're not seeing it, you don't have to go back and erase it. So just along that bottom edge, but covering up that pencil line. And then we'll do the same thing. So we're using the opposite side of this. We'll do the same thing coming here from the bottom. And just on the inside edge of that pencil line. Got a little crooked there at the top. There we go. All right, so now all we have pencil wise mark is this piece right here. And we are actually going to be covering that up. So don't worry. So now we're going to take our arches and you're gonna want the biggest ones first. Yep, just kind of place those on top of each other. Um, you'll want to line up the ends with those as much as you can. Now those are shorter too, so we're not gonna worry about those right now. So let's go ahead. So once we have those arches together, we're just going to fold them in half. So you line up your tail ends right there, folding them in half. And then we're going to cut. All right, so moving on, we've cut those in half. Now we're going to add on the other two pieces that we cut that were just a quarter of an inch there. And you're going to center those together the best that you can. Again, we're going to fold these in half and use our scissors to cut. All right, so now what I want to do is we're gonna be using some with the yellow and some with the stripe. Now, I like the ones that show more of the stripe on that one. So I am going to fold those over. So you see how this is a little bit different. So I'm gonna use the yellow side on that one. So we're gonna use as many of, you're gonna need eight yellow and eight with the line. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we're using, we've got a couple left over. So we'll just set these off to the side there. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to um, place the the yellow ones. So I'm gonna just slide that over. I'm going to put repositionable on the back. And right where that positive um, or plus sign is with the pencils, we're just gonna put that right up on the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do yellows right now, or golds, I should say. So now I'm gonna place this on that pencil line, kind of halfway there and place that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to place it on all four of these, um, kind of straight up and down. So I'm gonna place four first. And you're gonna want the ends all going in the same direction. Now we're gonna come in and we are going to place these halfway in between. Okay, so you're gonna need like so. Fill in on the in-between. All right, so now we have the gold in place. Now we're going to use the colored pieces. So we're gonna take and put a colored piece on the in-between of these pieces here. So we'll just 
place that in the center and then go on the center of every other one. So this is going to create a burst and what I thought we could do then is because it has a back to school feel and theme that whatever grade your young one is going into could be kind of that cluster that we create in the center. So maybe it's fourth grade, maybe it's third, or you can just create a nice cluster to go on the inside of those. So we'll get all of the, and having the colors kind of ties it all in together. So having those striped pieces adds a little bit more dimension to it. So there we have that cluster. So let's go ahead and add our mats on. So for that, we are going to want a piece of cardstock. I pulled a couple of different colors for it. So we have the dark green, but that's really dark on the base. And then we have the Kelly green, and that actually could work nicely because we have to remember we're gonna be putting pictures over the top of it. So we're just gonna see that outside edge. We also have the canary cardstock, which is the yellow, and that actually lightens it up. It pulls a little bit from that outside, but then pops off of that dark base. Or we have the red, which we'll do the same thing with. Um, so either one of these, I feel like, could be a very nice option for us to go with. So let's go ahead and use the canary, the yellow. So we're going to start and cut some photo mats and our mats are going to be three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Cut those by three and a quarter and by three and a quarter and again by three and a quarter. These we're going to be placing one down here, centered in that spot. We'll place one next to it here, so it has a nice quarter of an inch around it, and one here. I'm not gonna adhere them quite yet. I wanna cut my next two pieces first. So I'm going to cut at three and a quarter inches just like I previously did. And then I am going to rotate it, cut at four inches, and again at four inches. So that is going to leave your photo sizes three by three, one that's three by three and three quarters, and one that is three and three quarters by three. So you're just going to adhere those here, leaving a nice quarter of an inch spacing between everything. So go ahead and adhere those into place. And it's totally up to you if you want to use to adhere these. We're not going to be moving them. Um, but if you want to have the flexibility to be able to move these around, should you need to, then you are going to want um, your regular adhesive. So we'll go ahead and it was great timing to run out of the repositional bowl because I can use my regular adhesive for this one. So we'll just be creating a fourth of an inch, matting all the way around. All right. So this is going to allow you to place five photos whether it's their first day of school, 
uh, maybe some sports photos. Uh, I like the idea of first day of school, right? Especially with all the kids heading back right now. All right, so now we have this here. So now let's go ahead. So we can use our embellishments. And again, we can create a nice cluster for the top. This also has uh, some epoxy gems, so we can use these on the outside. I'm gonna set those aside and kind of figure out what we are going to use as our centerpiece with this. Um, and th this to me competes a little bit with those outside um, border edges. So let's, how about a green with the chalkboard? And then maybe, you know, we've got school rules. We also have this little notebook that we can kind of add in there. And then potentially we could add one of our stickers as a title. So maybe, let's go ahead and adhere these together. And once I do that, then maybe we can pop the whole piece off of the base or back to the books and you can just add that versus clustering anything. That pulls all those colors out and then we could add these pieces. I really am liking this. I also like our foam tape. I'm all about dimension. So adding a couple of pieces of foam tape to the back. Um, I can also add if I wanted to some foam squares. So I can maybe just put a couple in the center there. Remove those backings. And then adding this to the center. All right, so like I said, then that would allow us to take these pieces here and we can either add them to the ends or we can kind of just um, distribute or place them around the outside edges. Like I said, we can, so, but you notice how I'm still anchoring them to the spinnies. Oh, spinnies, what kind of word is that? Okay, and then we'll go like that. All right, so just kind of distributing those along the outside. We could if we wanted to, um, you know, like I said, either placing them on the end, but I do still wanna keep them somewhat anchored to those pieces, the burst pieces. All right, so that actually completes our layout. Uh, so you could add a burst of love to any layout that you are creating as well. So like I said, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel or comment and tell me which collection you're going to be using with your burst of love. Thank you again for joining me. Until next time, love and blessings.